Scene interactivity is very important when it comes to rendering and in today's video I want to show you how to set up your scenes to get fast iterations and turnarounds for your look dev and lighting scenes. This is stage 2 of 3 which I recently presented at an Autodesk webinar. If you would like to support my channel and if you haven't done so yet, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and show your support that way. So without further ado, let's dive into stage 2 and get your scenes to the next level. In stage 2, I want to talk about scene interactivity. It is very important to have fast iteration times and a very good interaction with your scene when you do shading, when you do lighting, when you do grooming, all sorts of tweaks. Things need to be very speedy and need to, you need to see your results pretty fast. So now let's hit render and see what we get. So first of all, you can see once I move out, everything gets kind of laggy as soon as the render starts. You can see also the, the image is not updating very fast. Everything is very slow at the beginning. So even if I change my light colors here, it takes some time for it to actually let me select them. So let's try here. And if I then change my intensity, you will see that there is some kind of delay until it picks up. And it's very annoying if things are too slow. So what I always do, I will again check my render settings. And the first gotcha is um, to see your A samples here. And you can see it's um, total from 90 to 100, which shows me that adaptive sampling is turned on. So make sure for interactive render sessions, disable adaptive sampling. And you should already see a lot faster response time. So that is quite important. You can still see, once you see more buckets rendering and it gets for final pixel, things start to get slow again and it's a bit bizarre. Things get laggy and stuff. You can see now my light movements are not picked up immediately. So things are not perfect just yet. Uh, what I also tend to do, I check my ray depth. Two is probably a good value, but it's always good for fast iteration. Just lower everything to as low as needed. Uh, because this is a skin material, you do want to have subsurface scattering, maybe not at three, maybe two is fine. And then what I always do, I also reduce my um, diffuse and specular samples. So now let's see what we get. We still kind of um, get some lagging, but it's still, it feels now very fast actually. Unless you see for the final pixel rendering, it tends to get a bit laggy again. So what that tells me is that it seems like my machine is too occupied rendering pixels and it's not giving too many resources to um, my UI. And what you can do in your Arnold render view, you have this option here to go on to render, save UI threads. And the default is, I believe, one. And you can save up to three threads for UI purposes. Sometimes, depending on your machine, this is really dependent on your machine, this is enough to get a very nice, smooth UI. Um, in my case, in my machine, because I have probably a lot more threads to spare, um, it still tends to go a little bit laggy. So what I do, instead of using it um, through this save UI threads in here, I say none up here, but then I go to my system tabs and find the option called auto detect threads. What, it's, what it means on default is that it will find all the threads your CPU has and it will take all of them to render. This, if the other one is turned off to zero, 100% of the cores will go to rendering and it will be very laggy. So I can showcase this now. You can see it's um, it gets got even worse now. Things got really slow and sluggish. So the solution for this is to disable this checkbox and then you can specify either how many threads you want to use to render. So you can say, oh, I just want to use 10 threads if you have that many. And if I render now, you should you will see that it's so fluid. It's It's amazing. You can move your lights and everything feels very speedy. Let's increase my light source. You will see that it, it essentially is like a real-time renderer now. It's very fast, right? You can see my lights move in real time essentially. And it's really a fun way to do lighting like that. If you can spare the threads, I highly recommend you do this. Um, obviously, there's a few different tricks to this. Go back to render settings and you can say like my current build has 80 threads. I have a dual CPU machine, so that's why my renders are also fast but it's, it applies to the same settings for your machines. Obviously, if you have just 20 threads to spare, I'm using 10 for rendering. It's pretty good because half of them are used for UI, which in my in my in most cases is a bit much. Uh, what you can also do, you can say, um, I want this number to be not positive, but if you enter, let's say, negative 10 in here, what this tells Arnold is save 10 threads 
or don't use 10 threads, do whatever you want with those 10, but just don't use them. And this is the setting I use all the time. Um, and the, the reason is why I do this is because sometimes you don't know how many threads you have and you just use, um, okay, I want to save two or three. And this setting corresponds to the one in the drop down menu. So if I put this to minus three, this is equi equivalent to if you put this to, to the value of three, right? So if I put this to none and use three here, that's totally the same thing. For my machine, what I always do, I go minus 20 because as I said, I do have 80 threads and I'm saving quite a lot for the UI. It's a bit weird because of, I have a dual CPU, like a dual CPU system. It's a bit weird that I need to use 20. I would love to just use five or 10 or something. But if I use lower than 20, let's say I go down to 10, you will see that my response times are again a little bit laggy. It's not the same as I showed before. It's definitely a lot better. Um, but it will be even smoother if I go up to 20. And again, I can spare those threads. So it's nice that I can do that. And this is now a very nice and smooth. So these are the tricks I do to do fast iterations. And also what obviously helps if you want to quickly see final pixels, um, you should enable denoising. And you can also obviously go a little bit lower here. And you can also make sure that you add the imager. So if I go to denoise option here, you will now have the Arnold denoiser applied. And if you if you increase your variance maybe to 0.8 and I restart the render, that once the render is done, you get already a very high quality clean image. So it's very um, good to use denoising because now in 37 seconds, I already have a very clean result of my image. And again, in 20 seconds, we have our results. So these are the few things I always do for scene optimization. Make sure you have very low render settings. Don't go crazy with adaptive. Make sure that this is off. And obviously only for your final renders, you should bump up your settings and you should do an offline render and get the best out of it. But for shading, lighting and quick iterations, these are the tricks I use all the time. And it's just such a time saver to do more iterations, more versions until um, your supervisor or um, you yourself are happy with your current project. Let me know in the comments below which of my tips helped you the most and don't forget to like this video and if you haven't done so, subscribe to my channel. I would like to see you in my next video.